Airline apologizes after extremely inappropriate film played to all passengers. An airline has apologized after a maturated film was played to all passengers on a flight, including families with young children. The inappropriate screening happened on a Qantas flight from Sydney to Tokyo after the plane's in-flight entertainment system failed to work before takeoff. After staff were unable to fix the fault, the plane took off after a delay of more than an hour, with the crew deciding to show the same film to everyone instead. However, to the horror of some passengers on board the nine and a half hour flight, the sexually explicit drama Daddio then began to play. To make matters worse, travelers reported they were effectively forced to watch because they were unable to turn off, pause or even dim their individual screens. One of those on board wrote on the website Reddit, the movie they played was extremely inappropriate. It featured graphic nudity and a lot of sexting, the kind where you could literally read the texts on screen without needing headphones. It took almost an hour of this before they switched to a more kid-friendly movie, but it was super uncomfortable for everyone, especially with families and kids on board. How is this acceptable for a major airline? The film, which was released last year, stars Sean Penn and Dakota Johnson and tells the story of a woman and a taxi driver who discuss sex and relationships. Daddio is rated 18 in the UK for its language, sexual material and nudity, restricted, R, in the US, and MA15 plus 4 strong course language and nudity in Australia. Following Saturday's flight, Qantas said in a statement, the movie was clearly not suitable to play for the whole flight and we sincerely apologize to customers for this experience. All screens were changed to a family-friendly movie for the rest of the flight, which is our standard practice for the rare cases where individual movie selection isn't possible. We are reviewing how the movie was selected. Etihad Airways boss denies paying over the odds for Manchester City sponsorship. Etihad's chief executive has denied the suggestion it may have paid too much for its sponsorship of Manchester City in order to help the team. Antonio Aldo Nevis told that all the airline sponsorship deals were at the market level and agreed after a lot of negotiations. It comes as Manchester City this week attempted to claim victory in a case against the Premier League over the legality of rules governing how much it can earn from sponsors linked to their Abu Dhabi owners. Central to the case was City, in 2023, striking a more lucrative extension of its shirt and stadium naming rights. Etihad is ultimately owned by the Abu Dhabi government through the Wealth Fund ADQ. Mr. Nevis told, Etihad doesn't do any transactions with any partner that is not on the market basis. We have an amazing governance in Etihad. The mandate we have from our shareholders is very clear, deliver extraordinary customer experience and at the same time deliver an airline that is financially viable. Etihad's boss added, if we don't engage in transactions at the market level, the returns don't come, so absolutely, yes, it's market-based. It's a lot of negotiations that go on. And we get great returns from all these sponsorship contracts we have. The airline boss said the Manchester City deal brings us global exposure due to the club's huge success. He said the primary consideration for commercial tie-ups is return on investment and allowing the company to tap into different segments of customers. Etihad also sponsors teams including the IPL cricket side Chennai Super Kings and La Liga team Girona FC. The Premier League also sought to claim victory after this week's tribunal, which was ruling on Associated Party Transactions APT, rules. Associated parties are companies or people who have a significant interest in a club, financially or otherwise. The Premier League requires any club to run dealings with associated parties past them to decide if the transaction represent a fair market value and is not excessive. The league said it believed the three judges had endorsed the overall objectives, framework and decision-making of the APT system. That conclusion was disputed by Manchester City lawyers who called it misleading in a letter to the other 19 Premier League sides.
Lisa Marie Presley kept son on ice for two months before funeral, new memoir reveals. Lisa Marie Presley kept her dead son on dry ice for two months before finally arranging his funeral, a new memoir has revealed. Presley, the only child of Elvis and Priscilla Presley, kept her 27-year-old son, Benjamin Keough, at home with her rather than keeping him at the morgue after he died by suicide in 2020. According to a memoir started by Presley and finished by her daughter, actress Riley Keough, 35-year-old, Benjamin was kept on dry ice as California has no laws mandating when a body should be disposed. Daisy Jones and the six actress Keo said, it was really important for my mom to have ample time to say goodbye to him, the same way she'd done with her dad. And I would go and sit in there with him, quotes her as writing. The memoir goes on to recall how Presley and her daughter decided to get Benjamin's name tattooed in the same place where he had their names tattooed, namely the collarbone for Keo and the hand for Presley. Lisa Marie Presley had just asked this poor man, tattoo artist, to look at the body of her dead son, which happened to be right next to us in the casitas. I've had an extremely absurd life, but this moment is in the top five, Keo wrote. <laughs> U.S. officials threatened to break up Google. U.S. officials have confirmed they are considering breaking up Google's illegal monopoly of internet searches. The tech giant could face restrictions on its own products including its Chrome browser, Play Store and Android operating system, the U.S. Justice Department said. It comes after a judge found in August the company had broken antitrust laws to ensure its dominance of online searches. Officials have now outlined a series of proposals to dismantle the company's monopoly in a court filing. The plans include blocking Google from paying other tech firms to have its search engine pre-installed or set as the default option on new devices. The firm paid out more than $26 billion in 2021 to companies such as iPhone maker Apple as part of the practice. A Justice Department spokesperson said, fully remedying these harms requires not only ending Google's control of distribution today, but also ensuring Google cannot control the distribution of tomorrow. Google said the court filing was part of a long process and confirmed it would appeal against the ruling. Leon Mulholland, the company's vice president of regulatory affairs, said the radical changes proposed went too far and accused the U.S. government of having a sweeping agenda that will impact numerous industries and products. She added the move would risk the privacy and security of users, hamper the development of its artificial intelligence products and break software such as Android. Meanwhile, in a separate case on Monday, a judge ordered Google must open up its app store to greater competition, including making Android apps available from rival sources. Judge James Donato said the firm should stop requiring its own payment system to be used for apps on the Play Store. The ruling follows a court battle between Google and Epic Games, which makes the popular video game Fortnite, over in-app purchases. <laughs> TikTok sued by 13 U.S. states for harming young people's mental health. 13 U.S. states and Washington, D.C. are suing TikTok over claims it is harming children's mental health and not doing enough to protect them. The lawsuits allege the video sharing app is designed to be addictive and keep teenagers glued to the screen. TikTok said the claims were inaccurate and misleading and pointed to features such as default screen time and privacy settings for under 16s. The legal action is another blow for the app, owned by Chinese firm ByteDance, which already faces a potential U.S. ban over fears it could give data to the Beijing government, something it insists will not happen. Young people are struggling with their mental health because of addictive social media platforms like TikTok, said New York Attorney General Letitia James. She also alleged young people had died and been injured copying stunts they had watched. Her counterpart in Washington, D.C., Brian Schwalb, called it an intentionally addictive product. His lawsuit accuses TikTok of causing profound psychological and physiological harms including depression, anxiety and body dysmorphia. 
Other claims in the mass legal action include that a virtual strip club with no age restrictions is effectively able to operate via TikTok's live streaming and virtual currency functions. TikTok spokesperson Alex Horek said he was dismayed the states had not chosen to work with the service on their concerns. We're proud of and remain deeply committed to the work we've done to protect teens and we will continue to update and improve our product. We've endeavored to work with the attorneys general for over two years, and it is incredibly disappointing they have taken this step rather than work with us on constructive solutions to industry-wide challenges, he said. TikTok provides safety features including default screen time limits and privacy defaults for users under the age of 16, the company said. TikTok also doesn't allow under-13s to use its main service and restricts some content for under-18s. Those suing under the new action are California, Illinois, Kentucky, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Mississippi, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Oregon, South Carolina, Vermont, Washington State, as well as Washington, D.C. Other U.S. states have previously launched similar child protection cases against TikTok. In August, the U.S. Justice Department also sued the app at a federal level for allegedly failing to protect children's privacy. However, the main threat remains a new U.S. law which threatens to ban TikTok in the new year unless ByteDance sells it. The company has appealed against the ruling and judges are expected to issue a decision which could ultimately end up in the Supreme Court. Scientists shocked at how quickly parts of Antarctica are turning green. Parts of Antarctica are turning green more quickly than previously thought, leaving scientists shocked at the impact of climate change in the region. The area covered by vegetation in the Antarctic Peninsula is 10 times larger than four decades ago, a UK research team has said. It means the 1,300 kilometers area in the northernmost part of the continent could become vulnerable to invasive species as a result. Using satellite data, researchers from the Universities of Exeter and Hertfordshire and the British Antarctic Survey studied how much the area has been greening in response to climate change. For now, it remains almost entirely covered by snow, ice, and rock, with plant life growing on only a tiny fraction of the landscape, but that tiny fraction has grown dramatically. In one part of the peninsula, vegetation grew from less than 1 square kilometer in 1986 to almost 12 square kilometers by 2021. The pace of change has accelerated by more than 30 percent between 2016 and 2021 and the team said it showed anthropogenic climate change, or that caused by humans, which is a key contributing factor, has no limit in its reach. Dr. Thomas Rowland, from the University of Exeter, said the scale of the greening trend we found shocked us. Even in the peninsula, a most extreme, remote and isolated wilderness region. The landscape is changing and these effects are visible from space, he said. Calling for meaningful action, cooperation and accountability, he said it was time to stop playing politics with our planet's future. The study's findings, he added, raised serious concerns about the environmental future of the Antarctic Peninsula and of the continent as a whole. Dr. Ollie Bartlett, from the University of Hertfordshire, said they were not surprised by the presence of the vegetation itself, but it is the rate at which that vegetation cover is expanding that has shocked us. Many of the plants they found, typically mosses, lichens, liverworts, and fungi can grow on bare rock surfaces and have been present for over 5,000 years. The research published in the journal Nature Geosciences found that while the soil in Antarctica is almost non-existent, an increase in plant life will add organic matter and allow soil to form. This could potentially pave the way for other plants to grow, they said. He warned that dramatic increase in vegetation will further develop and create new soils across the region, providing a medium in which non-native and potentially invasive species can become established.